There you are, welcome to 3D Printing Nerd Studios, proudly powered by PCB Way. Link in the description, use code 3DPN, you get 8% off your order. Heck of a deal if you ask me. This is the Orange Storm Giga from Elegoo, and as I famously unboxed it and had an issue with it, I followed the directions precisely and it murdered itself. We finally have a finished print on the bed and I need to tell you about the absolute madness it took to get to this spot because holy cow. Why does this keep happening to me? To recap a bit of the stream, unboxing went just fine and assembly went fine. Once it was assembled and energized, we had to do the leveling and it does a 100 point leveling of the bed. It's 10 by 10 in a grid and it takes a little bit of time. It does that and then it offers for you to adjust the Z offset, which I used the tool to do and I adjusted the Z offset to what was proper. And then that's when things went off the rails. Are you kidding me? The machine attempting to do the first print dove the nozzle into the front left bed, scarring it beyond belief. And at that point, I just enthusiastically apologized to the audience over and over, and I alt f 4 my way out of the live stream. I, I'm done. The Orange Storm Giga does, like I said, a 100 point level, 10 by 10 mesh of the bed, and then it lets you set the Z offset. There's absolutely no reason it should dig the head into the bed because it knows exactly where every single point of the bed is. It just didn't make any sense. I have absolutely no idea what's going on. I, of course, shared my feedback with Elagu bless their little hearts, and they asked for the clipper logs and the leveling data, which I, of course, shared with them. When you connect this 3D printer to Wi-Fi and go to the assigned IP address, you're given the fluid interface. And within the interface, you can take a look at the graph that represents the bed mesh level. And when you look at the image originally, and this is the image I sent to Elegoo, it looks a little bit suspect. It looks like a side of the mountain range, and you're like, holy crap. What? you have to look at the key because it tells you what the highest point and the lowest points are. Giving a sense of scale, it tells us that the highest point is minus 4.9 millimeters and the lowest point is minus 6.29 millimeters, which gives us a difference of 1.4 millimeters across the span of 800 millimeters. It should be able to compensate for a 1.4 millimeter difference over 800 millimeters. I just, I didn't understand what was happening. In response to the clipper logs and the leveling data, Elegu did say, hey, you know what? We're gonna send you parts. And the engineers are working on an optimized firmware. Cool. A subsequent email from Elegu said they wanted me to check and change the fade start and fade end values within the configuration. The fade within Clipper means that as you have a bed and it might be off or the mesh might have lumps in it, the idea is over a certain number of layers, you can fade that out. It'll automatically adjust it so it's not having to compensate for those lumps in the bed over and over. It does it for a certain number of layers, whatever specified, and then it's all honky-dory printing into oblivion. Fade start within the configuration of my machine was set to minus 22.0, and they wanted me to change it to 1.0. That's a heck of a swing right there. Was that responsible for the nozzle offing itself into the lower left part of the bed? I don't know, but this seems better so I changed the settings. Now we can talk about the parts that arrived. There was a new print head and two new sheets. So there's the print head, or at least what it looks like. I've of course replaced it, but imagine this is a brand new print head. The one that I replaced though does have a slight difference to this one, whereas this has an orange grid up front behind this shroud. That one has a silver one, but other than that, it looks essentially the same. Also, Elegoo sent two new sheets that look like this, and they're a little bit different too. Here, you can look at it. It's a different, it's a different sheen altogether on the metal. I mean, I, I'm not mad about that, but it's just interesting that they've, they've changed it so soon. Parts are in. Let's take a look at the damage that was caused by the head moving itself into the bed when it shouldn't have. 
The hot end is a heater block with an attached heat break that is pressure fit into the heat sink. And then a screw on either side holds it into that heat sink. Now, when the nozzle went into the bed and it started dragging it around, it bent the screws and it snapped the heat break off. So there's a, there's the heat break and then there's the the heater block and that heat break itself is just snapped off into the heat sink forever, no longer of this world. For the hot end itself, as far as the heating parts, there is a solid metal piece that the nozzle threads into. There is a heater pad that sits on the side and there is a thermistor that pokes into a tiny little hole and then there's two springy metal sleeves that go over all of it and hold it into place. With the new head installed, it was time to go about proper leveling of this 3D printer. And after the head does the 100 point grid of the bed, it says if any of the four plates are too far away from each other, you have to do manual leveling. What Elegoo gives you are these two plates right here. These two build plate-esque looking pieces of spring steel and each one has nine holes in them and each hole represents each of the nine screws that there are per build plate. Yes, that's right. You get to adjust screws of the build plate at this point and not just one, two, three, you get nine per build plate and there's four build plates and all four build plates are held in place with springs. No! In the UI, you can hit an automatic button and it'll go through and tap the head on each of the nine screws of the front two plates and it'll tell you the level at which they sit. And it tells you that you can turn each screw clockwise or counterclockwise to adjust by 0.7 millimeter or minus 0.7 millimeter. It's entirely non-specific and non-precise how you're doing this, even though it's attempting to give you precise numbers and it wasn't fun. You can also, through the UI, touch each of the screw points and it'll move the head over that. And that's what I ended up doing after doing the automatic bits. I wanted to get as close as possible because you're supposed to get 0.00, .00 or as close to that. And what I did was start leveling. I would hit a point and then I would hit the next point and then I would adjust the one previous and I'd go back to that and I would tap that one and then go to the one that was just measured and I measured that and then I'd move it to another point and then measure that and then go to another point. It was like, is this the bad place? I give up. I firmly believe that the beds should not be mounted with springs. They should instead be mounted with rigid posts. You're trying to bring four different planes into synchronicity. I don't know, whatever, whatever the term is that you're trying to do, that's what you're trying to do. And it's not easy and it's prone to error. And I got most things leveled up as best I could, but when the head would go and measure, it wasn't always giving the same numbers each time. And so this path was fraught with treachery and errors and sadness, and it took a long time to do this. I was, I was leveling that for an hour and a half, an hour, and a, an hour, an hour. In an email to me, Elegoo did say that the reason that they're using springs is so that when you have four heads on this machine, each head is able to print at the proper level on each bed. And I'm gonna be honest with you, Elegoo, that makes zero sense. Why would you change each bed's height to match a nozzle when you could just change each height of the nozzle to be proper across the bed? Because you have to assume that X and Y are going to be as parallel as possible to the bed. What you should do, Elegoo, is have each nozzle able to adjust in Z so that the bottom of each of the four nozzles, when you have four on here, are at the same level. Because then you don't have to adjust your bed and you can have a rigid mounted bed. It's a good idea. With everything leveled and leveled and leveled and leveled again, it was time to attempt my first print. And I, I preheated everything. I set the bed to the and the nozzle to the PLA settings that are in, in this and uh, just Fun fact, when you set preheat in the bed to 60 and the nozzle to whatever, the, the machine is pulling nearly 1300 watts at 13.5 amp. 
when we talk about North American residential circuits, most of them are 15 amp, which means you're approaching the limit of what a circuit should be. So if you've pre-ordered one of these machines, and you have multiple 3D printers on the same circuit, you might be popping circuits. I thankfully have 20 amp circuits here in the sound stage and it works just fine. Just good to know. I had power stations come online and I was preheating and it was time to load the filament. And I, I went and I grabbed the filament and I loaded it in and it jammed. It, it jammed. jammed. I thought I was gonna show you something cool next time I turn this on, but instead I'm Having to troubleshoot a filament jam because of course, of course. That was terrible. It was absolutely terrible. And I was taking apart the print head just while it sat on the 3D printer. I was able to get the nozzle out and I attempted to put a metal rod down from the top to push any sort of plug out. That didn't seem to work. I turned off the fan that created the heat break and I attempted to get the heat sink heat soaked thinking it would melt whatever was in there and I could push it through and that didn't work. So I took the head off and I had to pull that hot end out of the heat sink and sure enough it came out and there was a plug. I found the plug. Unfortunately though, because the heat break is attached to the heater block, um, it's delicate and it bent a little bit when I was attempting to remove it. I did find my problem, but I broke it in the process. Thankfully, Elegoo included another heater block in the package that they sent me. So I was able to Frankenstein everything back together and become intimately familiar with this hot end and get it put back together. And I just, I felt, I felt glorious when I did this. Like I was, I was like, I was on top of the world. Now, because I changed everything around, I did the 100 point leveling again, and it was fine because I'd already leveled the bed and screwed and unscrewed things into oblivion. And then I, I preheated to 60C on the bed and I, and I consumed all the energies. And then I fed the filament in carefully and it was still jam. jam. So it turns out the jam happened between the extruder gears and the top of the heat sink, which is not easily accessible, not even close. There was no easy way to do this, so I did the only thing that I thought would work. So I grabbed myself my Hacksmith lightsaber torch, and I aimed it at the end of this, and I made it nice and hot, and I shoved it down in there, and eventually it gave way. So whatever tiny piece of PLA plug that was there, this melted, and now I've loaded filament. We are set to start our first print, and I went and I hit print and it homed Z and it moved over to start the purge line. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! That's right, it was printing. There it is right there. Let's get it off the build plate. This is the little Buddha. This is the little Buddha. It was printed with a brim and this was printed on my Elegoo Orange Storm Giga. And I gotta tell you, it's Perfect. I mean, it should be perfect because it's an example print from the manufacturer, but at the same time, like it's perfect. It looks fantastic, which means we are at the point where we can turn this on and get a big print going. However, let me show you something. The fans are a little loud. You have to remember in the guts of this machine, are four separate power supplies, one per bed, and then a fifth power supply to power the rest of it. Everything underneath this 3D printer gets warm, and so they need fans to keep it all cool. And to do that, it creates a lot of noise. So here's what I'm going to attempt to do. I'm gonna put it right back here. I'm gonna plug it in, and I'm going to attempt to do some long sort of print, hopefully get a time lapse of it, and we'll see what happens. Fingers crossed. I really didn't expect to be here talking to you right now about another failure. So I expected this awesome print. It was gonna be the Fixum Dude 
TIE Interceptor, the one that I printed on the really big 3D printer that was in my garage. And I thought, what a wonderful celebration of having another really big 3D printer. Uh, when I came in though, I, I noticed that the nozzle was making moves and I couldn't see the filament being deposited. So I ducked down really low and sure enough, there was space between the nozzle and the model being printed. So there was another jam. I'm just, I'm so sad about this because I really, really want this to work. And it was looking really good. Let me get it off the build plate. There we go. I mean, look at that, it's huge. I'm so disappointed. I'm so disappointed. I see these prints from Clayton and Jim from Edge of Tech and It's Boy in Space. And they're, they're showing off these huge, wonderful prints on the Orange Storm Giga and I wanna be there. But unfortunately, my machine just doesn't wanna do that yet. So we, we had it dig into the bed and we since fixed that. And then the nozzle and the hot end jammed and we took it apart and we fixed that. And then it jammed here. It jammed for this and you'll see there's different filament in there right now. And so after I took this off, I did some, I did some tests and felt like the jam was in the same place as it was before. I was unable to push the filament through after preheating the nozzle to 220, but I could use the gear and start to back it out a little bit. I had disengaged the extruder and tried to pull it out, but I couldn't do it. But with the gear, it was able to grip something and I could back it out and there was a little plug at the end. And so I put in different filament, got it through, got it through. Yes, okay, okay, we are good to go. The problem is now though, I don't trust the machine I, and there's no fail safe. When the extruder clogged, some machines have encoder wheels to sense when the filament is moving. And if it had that, it would have sensed that the filament wasn't moving and it would have stopped the job or paused the job or whatever, but it doesn't have that. And for a machine this size, maybe that's a requirement because this is a lot of filament to waste, a lot of really good filament. And without the ability to recover, it's, it's really sad. Some of you might say, well, you can measure once it was on the build plate and then continue printing from there. The problem is this has to home Z off the bed and this was taking up the whole bed. So I'm just really sad about this. I'm really sad about this. I will try again. And hopefully the next video you have from me with the Orange Storm Giga, it says my Orange Storm Giga works, exclamation point. And I can show you really cool models and talk about how the extruder has been performing and all of that. But until then, I'm just not a part of the cool kids club, apparently. <laughs> I'll provide this feedback to Elegoo and the whole reason we have these from Elegoo is so the problems we encounter, we can give feedback about and then they can fix those. So people that back the machine on Kickstarter don't have the same problems. So I'm hoping the trials that I'm going through here are beneficial in that backers won't have to do the same thing. But you know what? You made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in and fix all the jams. And as always, high five.